welcome to Victory Church this morning. Um, we have the most amazing opportunity right now to worship God. It's probably the best thing you're going to be able to do this entire week. No, it is the best thing you're going to be able to do this entire week. Because you're not on your own this time or with your family in your house. You are with a wider group of people. So I'm just going to pray and then the band are going to get going. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to come to you again this morning and worship you. We want to just say at the start of all this, Lord, as we still our hearts, that we, we love you, God. Yes. Yeah. We love you. Yes, Lord. This worship is for you, Lord. We want, to make, we want to make much of you today, God. We've come to glorify the King of Kings. We've come to glorify the one who heals and saves and delivers. And because you've promised that when two or more are gathered, you are there, Lord, everything changes in this moment. The atmosphere changes, Lord, because our expectation is that the one who's created it all is here, ready and willing, and we ask, Father, as we stir our hearts, would you speak to us, would you stir our hearts, would you, would you cause deep change to happen on the inside of us, Father, and would you receive much glory, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 are you ready to worship?
Just close your eyes for a second. Um, when I got in the car and I drove here this morning, I just said to the Lord, He must please speak to us. I'm so, so desperate for Him to speak to us. So I just want you to get your hearts ready. You just say it to Him. Say, I'm, I'm here, Lord. I want you to speak to me. Some of us just need to hear again that uh, he's faithful in yeah. every storm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are in the storm right now and it doesn't even feel like that. But he's faithful. Yeah. And when you come out of the other end, yeah. it's that moment again where you declare he's faithful forevermore. Some of us need to. Just say it in faith this morning. You are faithful forevermore, Lord. Even though at the moment it's pretty stink. <laughs> Lord, as a church family, we look back and we say, you've done it, Lord. You've done amazing things. Incredible miracles. You've provided way beyond what we could have imagined. You've healed, you've delivered, you've set free. And we say as a church family this morning, we believe you will do it again. We believe you will heal again because you're a healer and you're loving and you're incredibly, incredibly kind. believe you will provide again because you're Jehovah Jireh. And even now, Lord, we want to say, if we have unbelief in us, please help our unbelief. We cry out, we say, help our unbelief. We want to believe more. We want to have faith that you will do it again and again and again and again.
Lord, we just um, we say it, Lord. From you are all things. To you are all things, God. You deserve all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. not just an invitation for moments when we gather together. God wants to do this in your house with just you. And you won't have a band and you will have your voice. But it will be incredible. Amen, amen. Come on, let's lift our voice and worship to the King of Kings this morning.
shared here, I think, on several occasions, and it just seems to always teach me new things. So I hope it's going to teach all of us something here today, or challenge us all today. It's uh, in 2 Corinthians 9, and it says this, it says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Now, when you when you see that through the lens of your own finances, you can think, I don't have these. You know, I'm not as much as those people over there, so even if I give, it's going to be small. I think it's because we don't understand how God sees what we give. Yeah. He doesn't look at it in the same way as we do. And I was just reminded of that this week. It says this, and it continues. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. You know, this is never just about this moment. This is always about planning. This is always about thinking. The Christian life isn't about, oh, what do I do spontaneously in that moment? And you can be spontaneous. Please do. There'll be boxes in the front here. There'll be boxes upstairs. There'll be snap scan and all the other stuff. So be spontaneous, please. But beyond spontaneity, Let's think and plan and live according to what it says. Because it says we should plan. It says we should think about our finances. And then we should decide in our hearts how much, much we will give. And we shouldn't do it reluctantly or in response to pressure. So no pastor, preacher, leader should ever be able to pressurize any of us into giving. It should always be in response to what we think the scriptures is saying. For God, this is the posture of God, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. And maybe you guys are 
light years ahead of where I'm at, but I'm learning more and more and more that the more I give, the happier it makes me. And maybe this is controversial. I've stopped thinking in, um, in percentages. Years ago. When people said, oh, you know, I don't give 10%. I'm a New Testament believer. And I was like, wow, if you're a New Testament believer, you should go check out what those guys and girls did. Some of them gave every, some of them sold their houses behind, you know, and gave it all away and walked away and didn't care. So let's be very careful. But it challenged me more and more and more that maybe this is just for me, maybe this is for someone else, but 10% is maybe not the benchmark. What if my family and your family could live way beyond that? What if we could put that aside and say, maybe we could get to 20? Maybe we could set ourselves a goal to get to 20? Wouldn't that be amazing? Do you know how happy some of us would be? Because some of us, we could easily get to 20. And we would be way happier. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Silence. <laughs> and you guys online, you can see this place. This is how it finishes. Then, this is after the posture, the generous heart situation, yeah? The cheerful person. Then you will always have everything you need. And there's an and. And plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Lord, we want to give today, we want to give in this moment, but I also pray that as a church, you will never stop teaching us about giving up. As families, as individuals, would you continue to speak to us? Would you continue to stretch us? We want to have the posture of cheerful people. <laughs> we want to be happy. When others say, why are they so happy? We want the answer to be, because they give so much away. Lord, help us to live according to the scriptures. So we ask, Holy Spirit, would you come and... Fill us afresh. Would you strengthen us? In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You can have a seat. It's time for news with John and Lee. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Um, number one, where is Caitlin? Is Caitlin here? I see her family. Yay! Caitlin and um, Peter, are there are any, other, any others? The two of them are being baptized today on Bishop Woo! Beach at 4 p.m. They are part of our Fusion Youth Group, so yay and well done to the parents. Hello, Julie. And um, we're so excited about that. So if you've got nothing to do at 4, pop down to the beach. It's always fun to see somebody else get into the water. Bring and to, Yeah, bring caution if you want. So that is very exciting. And then next weekend is church camp. Where would be if you're going on church yeah. camp? Yes. Yay, yes. so much fun. I think there is a spot or two if Ham put up his hand. Ham's coming. Yeah, <laughs> um, so church camp is next weekend. So if you don't see us, that's where we are. But there's still church for the other 250. So that's very cool. And then we didn't welcome the Stevenson boys. There's three of them here. There's about a hundred of them here. But only three are here today. Great. Welcome, the three of you. Yeah, give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> And then, oh yeah, so Val and Rod are here today from America. It's so exciting to have you. And Evie and Jono are going to chat a little bit about you now. But I just wanted to say that it's so lovely. What? I know. Jono says, I'm going to speak about Rod. I said, no, you're not. You're just going to cry. So let's see if he gets through it. But um, what I just, do we have some photos? We have some photos because, I know, the king is in the room. Also, he's also. Um, but what I wanted to say is that Val put up recently that they'd been in America for 17 years. And I thought, no, Val's got it wrong. She couldn't have been in America for 17 years because before you left, I was actually only in the church for four years. And then I thought, the amount of relationship that you put into us over those four years, I mean, it's incredible. So I just wanted to honor you. And then another thing is that they did our 
marriage prep. Father Rod did our And we never fight. So you must have done such a good job. <laughs> so just thank you. Just thank you for being family to us and for being here. It's so wonderful to have you here. And we just honor you and appreciate you and love you so very much. So there are some really fun photos over the years. Oh, there's one with Brent with hair like this. We didn't put it up. So come and chat to them afterwards. They are your family as well, and we're just so glad that you're here. Okay, Jono, good luck. Cool. Evie, come and join me. Yeah, so Ron and Val, quickly stand up and turn to the wonderful people. So uh, Ron and Val uh, with Mark and me started the church. We're so instrumental in my life. And if there's ever... <laughs> <laughs> this was about three seconds. Huh? Is there a with him? I was in the way of the pictures. Let me try, let me try. If there was ever uh, an example. Hmm. <laughs> of a couple that serves and just. That lays their life down for someone else. It's these two. Yeah. And they are just such an example to me and my wife and us as a church. And so we want to honor you. I don't know if you've seen the movie um, Dead by the Sun. The guy gets in the chair. Captain, my captain, and that is what Rod is to me. Captain, my captain. He's just an amazing man, and Val, you're just so amazing. And we thank you, and thank you for putting up with all my emotion <laughs> and crying this morning. But as you can see, they are family, and that's what happens when family talks about family. They, you need your Some interesting pics down there. <laughs> so, um, well done, John. That was lovely <laughs> and very true. So. As a 16-year-old, I walked into what was then Valley Christian Church, and I encountered the voice of an angel with hair to match. <laughs> <laughs> Bell was leading worship, and um, yeah, I and little did I know, I would continue to, uh, that, to get to know you, and um, you were a pastor, and a mentor, and a friend, and a leader, worship leader for many years after that, and um, meant so much to me. Um, Val and Rod are people who are committed to pulling out the gold in people. And um, I became part of the worship team, and she would continually push us to grow and put us into awkward situations <laughs> so that we'd have to grow, and we would be stretched. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. And you taught us so much over the years, and one of my absolute favorites is the there are two times to worship God, when you feel like it and when you don't. Yeah. And I often live by that because you don't always feel like it and um, things don't always look like you want them to, but he's always worthy to be worshipped and so that's something I carry with me, always. And then, um, yeah, whenever we are with you, we learn something. Some th things are there to be repeated, <laughs> the things that we learn. <laughs> But so much of the culture of this church and our family is founded on who you guys are. You taught us the value of the kingdom and the value of relationships and the value of having fun and a sense of humor and not taking yourself too seriously. And um, yeah, we just love you. I'm grateful for any time I get to spend with you. And yeah, things have not changed even though you've been away for 17 years, which I cannot believe, and right. over so many miles. And we love you dearly. So, that's Rodney and Bob. <laughs> yeah, don't you guys want to just come up and share if you want to. Give them a round of applause. It's an amazing couple. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Evie. Um, hi to those that don't know us. Uh, we were here 17 years, and now we're 17 years and one month in America. So, we're here just to say, wow, uh, you guys have just stood the ground. The last 18 months, we, we salute you guys, and uh, 
We are uh, back here to report that you sowed us and um, we believe that uh, we've done our best to, to reap for you guys uh, a, a great example of kingdom back in America. And uh, so we've just finally paid our building off, which uh, I always know that it would be something that I've I would rejoice when I see you guys in your home. Yes. I know that you've already put stakes in the ground in this area. Um, but I just, we just report back, as Paul and Barnabas did, and as Paul and Silas did as they went out, we report back to you that um, uh, we, we've done our best for, for the seed that you sow. And uh, we've just employed our first couple of 17 years. As I told the church, I said, we're not getting any younger. Well, Please. he might not be. Barry never gets younger, as you may know. Just wears her parts out, her jaw parts, her foot parts, and all the other parts of it. But we're just honored to be here. And Jono and, and Lee, kudos to you and your team for just doing such an incredible job. I only, the reason why I am like I am is because of Harry and Lee. They, they showed me how to pastor, how to love, how to be a husband, how to be a father. And we salute you, Harry. And we thank you for the generational hand downs. And we fight for the next generation. And they're going to do something more and better than we've ever seen because the king is with them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and if any of you want to come visit Florida, you have a place to stay. We are the Sunshine State, which is the least I can say for today. But it's so good to be back and just to see the fruit. I brag about you guys wherever I go. And just we honor you, and I want to speak to those that are at home. Come back. That's all I'm going to say. But there's two scriptures quickly. Isaiah 40 says, comfort my people. Isaiah 61 says that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me to preach good news. We are in such an era worldwide where the enemy is out to divide and conquer. Yeah. And wherever it is possible with you, be at peace with all men, the scripture says. So go out there and who cares what they say and what they do. Make sure that you preach the good news. Give them good news. Give them a hope. Give them a future. Because that's who we are. Yeah. Amen. And we're so proud of you. And it's so good to see so many people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we just speak abundance to this place. And you're going to have your own building. And then we're going to come back. And we want to cut the ribbon for you. <laughs> Amen. And if these walls could talk. Yes. Music through the ages. Fashion shows. All these things that this church did in this place. Uh, resounds through, through time. And Do any of you know how long it took Steve and Tanya to propose to you? At Stephen Weber to propose to Tanya. Everybody was getting married, getting married, getting married five years later. And we have this thing that the person who sits in the chair next to them finds a partner. Where are you, Ainsley? Where are you, Ainsley? God bless. Thank you so much. Yeah, what a privilege. Uh, over to Ham. Yay, we are so excited that we have the honor of having Ham Stevenson with us from Connections Church. Yeah. Uh, he is an amazing man. Please give him uh, all your love this morning. Yeah. So I pray for you. Let me just pray for you before we start. He's an amazing man. He really, he really is, and he has, he's always had our heart. Uh, he's been very encouraging to me and to our church, uh, and he leads a fantastic church uh, down the road, and uh, we're just so grateful that you're here and have said yes to the invitation, and so we're going to hand over to you. I just want to pray for us. So Father, we thank you for this amazing man. We thank you uh, for the position that he holds in your kingdom, and Father, this morning I pray that whatever he speaks and communicates straight from your throne room, that it would be for us, that our hearts would be open and our minds would be open to receive in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jonah, thank you so much. Uh, to Jane, why don't you join me? Um, are we okay with the mic, kids? I just, I couldn't find an angle to actually, it's made for a lady's, and it's an overlap the wrong way around. I just, I'm an engineer and I can't figure this thing out. Eh? <laughs> I can't pin it anyway. Do I pin it across here? So I'm just. Ah. Let's see if I do that. What do we do? Well, maybe. Sure, 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 sure. 
Great, it's um, our absolute delight and privilege to come and share this moment with you. And I feel like you guys should be sharing God's story out of the States so to us and come and encourage us. But uh, it's an incredible privilege for Jane and I to join you. But um, our, our boys, um, well, some of our boys, three of them, I'll get Jane to share now just how many children we do have. Um, the three of them have arrived here this morning. And uh, they said, no, 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 we're coming to support you. And so, um, Ash, Zach, and Sim, thank you so much for, uh, for coming and supporting Mom and Dad. Really, it's an incredible privilege to have your family with you. So, um, I'm just going to ask Jane to introduce us, just uh, give us a little bit of history so you have context, because um, are you ready to be kind of stirred to another level? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, and Sid, where are you? I'm going to start with you, okay? Um, you and I are going to have a one-on-one. You ready for that? Okay, but I'm going to get Jane to share first. You keep blushing. I have the huge privilege of being um, Hamilton's wife. We've been married 32 years uh, this year. And um, we have journeyed around the country. And, but we've been in Cape Town for the last 14, uh, 15 years now, where we came to lead Connections Church. Um, I had three biological children, and um, Hamilton decided that was enough. But God had other de- ideas, so we now have two adopted children. And um, they have been one of the biggest blessings in my whole life. And, um, yeah, God is amazing. He's awesome. And when he speaks, I just encourage you to listen because there's only blessing that comes from his voice. So, um, yeah, and then we do have another um, foster daughter who's um, writing a trick at the moment. And, um, yes, and we've got a church family (laughs) that we care for but for not, not for too much longer. Okay. Am I back on yeah? Yes, no, I am. Okay. No. no, yes, no? no. Not <laughs> down. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. so. No way. The mic is I'm just gonna stick this in behind you if you don't mind. <laughs> Great. I love using my hands. So um, if this goes, Johnny, you run and you catch it in. So let me start with you, Henry. Um, so appreciated yeah. um, your sharing around generosity and giving. And um, I, I'm just, this is for free, okay? So you raised it, I'm going to respond. <laughs> um, it's incredible how many people I get, and I, I want to look at you because uh, it's not, I'm addressing it to you, I'm addressing it to all of us here this morning. But uh, I so appreciated you raising it, and so. Um, Many people ask me about New Testament giving, and I kind of wrestle with me over this 10% thing and the percentage and all of that, and I agree with you fully that the percentage is actually, um, it's a problem. <laughs> so um, I like to, like to share with people who wrestle with me over the New Testament giving, hey? I say it's in John 3.16, and do we know what John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever may believe would have eternal life. I want to challenge us in terms of New Testament giving. If God could give a third of himself, yeah. I would suggest that the minimum New Testament giving is one third. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. Let's take it there. Yeah. So, 20%? Absolutely. It's too little. <laughs> 33? Still too little. 33 and a third? I think we're just getting there. How about 90? 11 on 10. Anyway, that's not even part of the message. So what I want to... Uh, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, uh, Jono, Lee, team, church, thank you so much. And Mark, I want to honor you. You know, when I... When we, in fact, when Jane and I arrived into this valley, we connected pretty soon. And um, it was really just a, a heart connect. I want to champion you for the work that you have done. But I want to say 
but there's still much more for you to do. Yeah. Retirement, yeah. retirement is not a kingdom term. Yeah. It's an earthly experience, but it's not a heavenly experience. There's an eternity. Yeah. And um, I want to ask you, what's your bilinear plan? <laughs> okay. What's your bilinear plan? Love you, Mark. Sure. So, uh, I was saying to Karen when she said to me, hey, you know, what's your scriptures for this morning? I said, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to come to church. I have a whole lot. But uh, when we're engaging with God, I'll pick up where we're going to go. And so, uh, I'm really trusting that this morning, God's going to speak to us, and that uh, He's going to challenge us, and He's going to take us to another level. Um, I believe in levels. I believe that God is actually calling us to go from strength to strength. And uh, I believe that God is calling us to go deeper. I believe that God is calling us into uh, a greater experience of His love and uh, of who He is. And so I have a full understanding that God is interested in engaging us. His, his, his desire is to engage us. And so this morning, I'm trusting that we will engage Him. But uh, just to give you a little bit of, um, I'm going to pick up just where, where Jane left off. Uh, um, for some of you, you might know that uh, we've been leading connections for almost 15 years. And so uh, next month, on the 31st of October, we're going to be handing over to Martina and Roxy Killian. And uh, I am so excited because I believe God is taking my full-time call to something else. And um, I'm going to say it right up front, I love making money. <laughs> Shall I say it again? I love making money. And uh, the crazy thing is, is that God's given me some extraordinary, heavenly ideas that uh, are unfolding. And for us, in this kind of portion of South Africa in the Western Cape, eh, to do what we are doing, when we're the leaders in the world of what we are busy with, eh? I want to say God is at work in this region. Yeah. This isn't Slavstadt anymore. <laughs> this is Bakerstadt. <laughs> this, is, this is a city that is in transformation. This is a region that's in transformation. If you say to me, is revival here? I want to say that God is awakening His church and He's awakening His people eh, to go to somewhere where I believe God is calling us. And so, when I look at, uh, at, at what God is doing and what He's saying in this region, um, John, I agree with you. Our hearts, there's, there's something that is knitted. There's something that we have the same rhythm, the same heartbeat. And uh, we want to see a region, a nation transformed. And who's going to transform it? Well, for many of us, so we're kind of waiting for God to do His thing. I want to say to you that God has done His thing. When I read eh, Acts chapter 2, and uh, I look at when Peter preached, eh, and he, did, he made that declaration at, when, uh, at Pentecost, when he, he spoke about the Joel text, when he said, In the last days I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Yeah. Friends, I want to say to you that that has happened. And so often the church, what we're doing is we are waiting for God to pour out His Spirit when He has poured out His Spirit. We're waiting for God to respond when He has responded. We're waiting for God to answer prayers when He has answered the prayers. We're waiting for God to send Jesus again when He has sent Jesus. Will He come back again? Yes. But He's coming back because He is waiting for us to do something in His kingdom. And so this morning I want to stir us around... What I believe God is doing in terms of, and I've titled my message this morning, The Greatest Awakening. The Greatest Awakening. And I believe that we are in the greatest awakening of all times in the history of mankind. Because I believe that Jesus is going to return in my time. I live like that. And I've got to understand, I've got to live like that. To believe that Jesus is coming back tomorrow. Because every day counts, every minute counts. Every, every engagement counts, every encounter it, it counts, every time of being able to worship Him and to exalt Him and extol Him counts. Yeah. We cannot afford eh, to waste any time any longer. Amen. And when God spoke, and, and um, Mark, this goes way back your time, I think, 
when God spoke about revival starting in this region, I want to say that you're going to see it in your, your day. Amen. In a measure like you've never experienced before. And uh, when people speak to me and say, Ham, when is it going to start? I want to say to you, it has started. Would you believe what God has already declared? Yeah. It yeah. has started. Because what we are seeing in this region, just in this, I don't even want to call it this valley because I think that's a restrictive word. Yeah. I use the word region. Yeah, in this region, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing hey, is a powerful encounter that God is having with His children. There's a transformation that's happening. No longer are we, are we kind of paddling in the pools. But there's a maturity that is arising, hey, that is beyond, uh, I believe, our ability as leaders in this region to, to engage and to, to initiate. It's God's work that He is doing. It's He's changing us, say, into maturity levels that I haven't seen before. Yeah. And we are part of that. Let me say, you are part of that. And it's really exciting what, uh, what God is doing and what He's saying. So I want to ask you two questions, and they're rhetorical questions that you need to answer in your heart, okay? Firstly, I want to ask you, who are you? Who are you? Secondly, whose are you? So who are you, and whose are you? <laughs> now I could have introduced myself this morning and I could have told you who I am in the physical flesh. And I like doing that. I like to, I like to give God an, an opportunity to, to kind of display who He is through who I am. But this morning I want to say that God has radically changed and transformed my life. 37 years ago, last night. 37 years ago, last night, was my salvation moment. Five past nine. 37 years ago, today, was my brother's transformation. Seven of us gave our lives to the Lord in 10 days in my matric year. Grade 12 for those who are still catching up with us. Seven of us. Seven of us are still serving God today. Yeah, it's worth it. Yes. For the length of time I've been talking here right now, 3,000 people have come to Christ around the world. By the time I'm finished, 6,000 people would have come to Christ. 3,000 Christ followers would have passed away. Do the maths. 3,000 people are permanently added to the kingdom of God every, 20, every 40 minutes. Is the kingdom of God growing, increasing, or decreasing? It's increasing. We're saying, Lord, where are they in this region? Bring them. I believe God is releasing multitudes of people hey, who have come to Him. His church, His kingdom is ever increasing, never diminishing. But there's a shaking that's happening in the world. And that Joel text there speaks about those who call on the name of the Lord. They shall be saved. And so... What God is doing and what He's saying, I think, is, is key to how we respond in this season. So turn with me to um, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read from verse 12. I'm going to ask Jane to comment on uh, some verses earlier than, than 12, just now, just as, uh, as I'm ministering. I'm really trusting that you catch the heartbeat of God in terms of the greatest awakening that I believe God is undertaking at this very moment, not only here in Fisher Cay, not only in South Africa, but around the world. Romans chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Therefore, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Isn't that an incredible injunction that Paul gives the church? He says that uh, we are not debtors to live according to the flesh. And so there's a challenge that he places here on us instantly. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of who? The sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but that but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what, for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. Now, he who searches the heart and knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. It's an incredible text. But friends, I want to say to you this morning that I believe that the next wave of what God is doing in and through the nations, is that He is awakening the heart of the church to come to a revelation that we are true sons of God. For too long, I believe that we've understood that, that yes, we are Christ followers, but we have been so caught up eh, in terms of what the world is doing, where we have not engaged what God is doing. And I believe that this is the season that God is calling us, say, to engage Him as true sons. And uh, for those who are gender, gender sensitive, please excuse me this morning. I'm going to make reference to sons of God. Because can I say to you ladies, you are a son of God. I, I don't want to diminish uh, the power of what Scripture is saying here this morning. In the same way, I will not diminish the fact that I am the bride of Christ. And so we are equal now, okay? <laughs> Let's settle that. You don't need to box me on this. But I believe that God is doing certain things in terms of what He's restoring into the life of the church. Because I believe when the church gets to her rightful place, her, her understanding, her mindset has uh, been shifted and changed and transformed. I believe that God is able to the church daily, those who have been saved. That, that, that text that, that uh, Peter spoke about out of Joel is that our sons, our daughters, our slaves are free, uh, free male, female, um, those who are from Asia, Africa, from United States, Australasia, wherever, Europe, everyone has the opportunity of being able to respond to the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let me say this, that we've been fixated on the gospel of salvation. I want to suggest that that both Paul, Jesus, all the writers of the New Testament were fixated on the gospel of the kingdom of God, the rule and reign of Jesus. We've made salvation such an issue. I want to suggest that we need to make a, a big issue of the rule and reign of Jesus over every sphere of our lives. So many people ask me this question. They say, Ham, 
Are you in full-time ministry? I said, I've never been out of full-time ministry. I've been 37 years and a couple of hours in full-time ministry. What do I mean by that? Because most of us think that to, to have Jono's call would be the ultimate in the kingdom of God. I want to suggest that, that uh, to lead a church, I, I, unless I was called, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I mentioned that I'm also an engineer. I happen to lead a couple of businesses. I happen to be an entrepreneur. I happen to be a creative thinker. I happen to be married, to be a family man. If you just, I can't say just, how dare I say that? If you are a daughter or a son, a person, I want to suggest to you this morning that you're in full-time ministry. You're in the full-time employ of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his kingdom is expanding and being established there in greater measure. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12 speaks about it. This great shaking, that shaking that's happening around the world. And it says this, that the kingdom of God is unshakable. Yeah. Joel chapter 2 speaks of the shaking that's happening as well. Friends, I don't know about you, but if you look around, that the shaking around the world is real. Who is going to stand up and be counted, eh? In this greatest awakening that we are ever going to and are experiencing, who's going to stand up? It's you and I. We, the church, need to stand up and say, actually, the kingdom of God is unshakable. But God is restoring. I believe God is, is addressing some key areas in our lives. <coughs> I believe that, that the, whole, the whole concept, eh, of God wants His church to be from a place of rest, from a place of shalom, from a place of peace. I was actually going to um, share the, the, the story of the Israelites coming out of slavery into freedom, into inheritance. And um, I, I chose not to do that this morning because I, I really felt that God wanted to put His finger on this. Eh? But the reality is that, that God's placing us into a um, an inheritance. The, the, the text says that we are heirs. We are co-heirs with Christ. There's an inheritance that we have. Friends, I want to ask you, what is it hey, that you are able to receive from the Father right now hey, that makes you a standout son of God? I'm reminded of the parable hey, of the, um, uh, where the son takes his inheritance and goes into the pigsty. Where the older son is in the field. You know the wonderful news about that story? Is that Jesus is telling it from his perspective being in the presence with his father. I call that story the three sons. Which son are we? Am I the son that's squandering my inheritance in the pigsty? Am I the son that is complaining about all other sons who have squandered their inheritance in the field? Come on. That's most of us, isn't it? You know, how can God pour out His Spirit in Bethel? How can God be doing something in Australia? You know what? How come God's kind of got an awakening going in Mongolia? You know, what's He doing in London? Come on, Lord. You know? Friends, we need to be like Jesus. I believe a greater focus on the kingdom of God is about who Jesus is, what he's able to do, what he's able to say, what he's able to declare, where he's able to lead and direct us. And so Christ is the central focus of what we do. But let me say this, that I believe that it's a completed work of the cross that empowers us. It's the resurrected Christ that empowers us. It's the ascended Christ that empowers us so, to live the life we do. Because Acts 1 8 says that uh, the Holy Spirit will come, will be poured out, and we will be His witness to every single area and aspect and sphere of our influence. So let me say to young folk, okay, you have a sphere of influence. Yeah. Older folk, you have a sphere of influence. Yeah. Those who are working, 
those who are at home, you have a sphere of influence. That sphere of influence, God is calling you, hey, to impact. What do we do? The Acts 1-8 text is a very interesting text because often we've said that we're empowered to witness for Christ. Actually, the Bible says that we're empowered to witness to Christ. So how do we do that? Well, to witness to somebody is actually to give testimony to who they are. So in your sphere of influence, the way you witness to Christ eh, is that whatever Christ is doing, you declare. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. That's good. I don't believe that we need to go and dry and dry. Turn and burn. <laughs> There's not the season for that. <laughs> It's a season of intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a season of creativity. It's a season of faith. Yes. It's a season where God is calling us, say, into a deeper level of relationship with Him. So let me ask you the question again. Who are you? Yeah. And whose are you? I'm going to ask Jane, just to, just in terms of this intimacy, I want, us to stir, I want her to stir us just a fresh shade. Eh? And uh, this is impromptu. Because uh, we're just really wanting to hear from the Spirit and say, God, what are you wanting to say to us as the church here today? Right. I think I'll just begin by saying that, um, that this is a fresh revelation for me coming from a place of um, works, of, um, of doing all the right things, saying all the right things, being the right thing, endeavoring to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ and to please Him on every level, um, having a head knowledge of uh, me being a new creation and Christ being me, in me, and, and me being in Him, but uh, the reality of that not fully sinking in or, or hitting home, if I can put it that way. So if we consider that Christ lives in us, we live in Christ, that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, that we are actually new creations. That word is kainos, and it actually means we are a new species of being. That means we are no longer who we were. We are now something completely different. Yeah. Yet, we often stay living in the old nature and struggling to get out of it. Well, God, I don't think that God intended that for us. He intended us to grow up into full mature sons who live from a heavenly perspective to earth, not from an earthly perspective to heaven. These things can only come when we have intimacy with the Lord because that is what shifts our perspective. Amen. When we are living from the knowledge of the tree of, of good and evil, we live from a worldly perspective, even our Christian lives, and we lived defeated. Yeah. We cannot overcome the things that are defeating us yeah. because we are living from the wrong place. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We live from an elevated position. The enemy is under our feet. Yes. We are no longer subject to his tricks or his, yeah. his temptations because we can live from a different space. But we have to choose to live there and we have to choose to understand that it comes by revelation. And the revelation begins in intimacy. Knowing Him and Him knowing us. It's like a marriage. 
If your relationship with Jesus isn't coming from a oneness, from a oneness, a place of oneness, then you're living like a divided being. And you will never grow up into that full sunshine. So, um, do you want me to share more than that? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Jane could spend hours sharing just this revelation. And so I want to say to you that I have just gleaned 48 points of who you are. I'm not going to go through them again. <laughs> but I encourage you, as you begin to read scripture, have it. would you believe what God says about you? Yeah. What is faith? Faith is believing what God <laughs> says. The reason that I believe faith is under the spotlight at the moment is God is asking us to believe Him. Would you believe me? Yeah. So He says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He says that you are a saint. What have we done as a church? We've, 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 we've placed so much emphasis on the fact that we are sinners. Let me go back to the point I made. I believe that we've got to go through the cross to the finished work. It is finished. We've got to look at, at ourselves from God's perspective, not from the world's perspective. So to, to declare that I'm a saint eh, is a bold statement. But the point is that is how God sees me. He sees me as holy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he sees me as beautiful. He sees me as his image bearer, his ambassador. He sees me as being set apart. He, he, he sees me as fully resourced. The reason so that I can, can banter about this area of generosity is because I've come to the understanding that everything I have is His. Yeah. I'm a steward. I say, God, what are you wanting me to do? Can I share some story? So, I'm not boasting, but I'm going to share some true story of what's happening with us at the moment. So, Connections never had a facility. We met in a school hall like this. COVID came along and uh, suddenly the schools were saying, you cannot meet like you couldn't meet. And, um, and so God opened a way for us to buy a factory building in Fishigo Park. And so we bought that factory building. So the reality is, how does a pastor um, who's kind of self-funded for 15 years or 14 years, 15 13 years at the time, you know, how, how do we, how are we able to do that? Well, it's, but by God. Yeah. It's what God has done. And God opened a way. Five years ago, if you're going to get lots of story now, you're going to have to stitch it together. Five years ago, I got a, um, I got a phone call to say, would you like a business? Two years before that, two prophetic gentleman that I respect uh, gave me words to say, hey, are you ready to take back um, your patents and are you ready to get back into engineering again? I said, yes. This church thing, this full-time ministry in church is wearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> it takes its toll. You know, that we aren't easy on our pastors, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I got the call um, in March 2016 to say, will you take over a business, eh? I said, yes, instantly. I didn't need to go and pray about it. I didn't need, didn't need to go and ask God about it. I said, yes. Within 14 days, the business was signed over to me. This couple, I don't think understood the kingdom dynamic that, uh, that I believe we have a perspective of. So that they might have a relationship with God, I'm not even sure. Then they said to me, they said, how are you going to fund this as a pastor? I said, I have no idea, but I know that God will. They said, great, we'll put a million rand into your bank account. They transferred within 24 hours a million rand into the business bank account. And they said, whenever you can, pay it back. Hmm. Within six weeks, they paid the million rand back. Really? 
six weeks. The business has just grown from strength to strength. As I said, we are doing things around the world, eh? I'm busy with a project at the moment that's in the middle of the Australian desert. Just finished a project that's in the middle of the Gobi Desert, which is in Mongolia. Finished another project, eh, which is in Saskatchewan in Canada. We're busy with equipment right now that's going into the United States. Eh? I have equipment that's from the southern tip of the Americas to the northern tip of America. From the southern tip of Africa to the northern tip of Africa. We have equipment in Mauritania. We have Saudi Arabia. We've got equipment that's from in there. We've got equipment that is in Asia, Europe, around the world. How did this happen? But God. Because I felt that God was saying to him, I want to lead you into an extravagance of my kingdom, hey, that you can lead others. I got this instruction from God. He says, tell my people who they are, their, their identity. I said, what do I do now? He says, just tell them who I am and who they are. Set their identity straight. Get them to believe me again about what I declare over them. Yeah. Last year, the COVID relief fund was, and so the, the Sukuma funding arrived, that's an Anton Rupert funding. We made application. We were given a million rand. The money arrived in the bank account. I had to say to my accountant about four weeks later, I said, actually, we don't need this money. Sure. We phoned up the fund managers and we said, listen, this million rand is better served eh, in another company's hands. Can we pay it back? They said, we don't have protocol for paying it back. <laughs> that protocol has been established in 2021. We're in 2020. So they established the protocol. Took them a while, but we paid them a million rand back. Last financial year, so 2019, 2020, it's the best financial year we have ever had. 2020, 2021 was better than that. 21, 22, we were reached, already reached the 2021 numbers. I'm leading a church. <laughs> I'm happy to do a bit of engineering. We have incredible favor with God. I want to say to you that God is restoring creativity. God is restoring favor. God is restoring inheritance. And this isn't because Jane and I want a new car or a flashy house or whatever it is. God is releasing His resources for the kingdom of God to be established there so that I am able to, and you are able to stand up and make declarations and witness to Christ. Because honestly, I can, the only answer I've got for you is that it's Jesus. Where does it come? It's come out of a place of intimacy. I was in the airport in Sao Paulo. So Sao Paulo is Brazil. I'd flown to Peru, to Lima, and I commissioned a piece of equipment. Crazy things that we pastors do, eh? That's my mission. So when I go, I, when I've done it into Africa, I go into business and we preach the good news of the gospel. We establish people in the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. I'm sitting in the airport in Sao Paulo. I have a, an encounter with God uh, of about 40 minutes. So you'll notice that I'm high tech, eh? I'm very high tech. And I had my high-tech equipment with me. So I had my Bible and my book. And um, in a space of around 40 minutes, I believe it was, God gave me a full design of a piece of safety equipment that's been used around the world right now. For 40 minutes. When I landed in Johannesburg, I handed, I, I, in fact, I took the book and I photostatted the notes and I gave it to the drafting and the design engineers, and I said, yeah, just do this. That equipment is being used to save people's lives in the mining industry right now. I don't own it. Because sure. I was actually consulting to somebody when that happened. And I honored my contract. It wasn't mine to keep, it was theirs. 
to weigh consultants and, and these kind of contracts with. But I want to say that God is restoring creativity. God is restoring just your ability to be able to do and say things and, and, and accomplish things eh, that are extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, out of this church, out of Victory, you've got some international stories. Yeah. You've got inheritance. Yeah. It says the inheritance is in the saints. We've got some shared inheritance in this region. I want to say to you that out of the, I think we have about three and a half thousand seats in Fisher. Three and a half thousand. If everybody pitched up on a Sunday, we could do about three and a half thousand people. What are we, 150,000 people? That's about 2%. something. I believe God's restoring creativity, God's restoring faith, God's restoring intimacy. When when the prodigal son returned, eh, the father put a robe on him. He restored his identity. When he put a ring onto his finger, he restored his authority. When he put the, the, the shoes onto his feet, he restored hey, his witness, his testimony. Because it says, the feet of him who shares the good news. He restored his witness. There's a restoration that's happening in the church. And friends, I believe that this great awakening that we are experiencing and that we are living in the very infinite, or, or, or infantile, sorry, the beginning part is incredibly powerful. But I want to go back to where Jane kind of stirred us to understand Christ in me. I'm in Christ. I'm seated in heavenly places. My position is no longer here on earth. I look from a heavenly perspective. I want to suggest that, that uh, for many of you, Intimacy with the Father will bring about creativity like you've never known. Ideas, concepts. Yesterday, Ash had a time with God. He got an idea. I'm not going to share it with you. <laughs> Man, it's a money-making idea. Come on. We need the resources, honey. The wealth of the, uh, I was going to say the wealth of the rich is stored up for the poor. The wealth of the wicked man yeah. is stored up for the righteous. Yeah. That just doesn't happen dropping out of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to use us mm -hmm. to transfer it. Jane. Yes. Jane wants to share something. Can I, no, can I let her share something? I just had a revelation while Harry was talking about uh, the prodigal son coming back and having those things restored. But you know what the first thing was that was restored? The father ran and embraced him. Yes. Intimacy was restored. Yeah. And I just had this, yes, Lord, that's where you're starting with us. To restore us to full, complete, mature sonship, you're starting with an embrace, with an intimacy. And that is like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Donna, I don't know if you and your team, <coughs> you want to... I'm going to stop there. Because I can, I can carry on, but um, I feel like the seed has been planted. They say the best, uh, the best news for a pastor is to tell him or preacher is just the, <clears throat> just deliver enough so that you whet the appetite so that people come back next week. You know what we do? We talk so much that you never want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you stand? We're going to sing the song. Good that. And then, uh, as soon as the song is, um, as soon as you can decide how long you go through with it, it's, it's up to you. I'm going to ask Jane to lead us in a time of intimacy. And so, the piano would be just a wonderful, wonderful instrument just to just do what you did just now. You know? I want you to engage 
this is your time to let's sit say to us this morning God's here we do join him he's present
choices are you making? May Holy Spirit can do in and through us the work that He's meant to do one on one with each other. It will take weeks. He's able to do that in an instant. It's been an incredible privilege and a delight just to share some of our own journey and our own stirrings and what we believe just what God's doing in this region in the nation at the moment and he's raising up sons who are able to cry out Abba Father and I want to close with that um, expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Earth needs you and I to rise up in our true identity and to be who God's called us to be. So whether you're a sports person, whether you're a scholar, whether you're in church ministry, whether you're in ministry that's uh, so much you guys both of you challenging and um, a huge blessing I feel my faith is so stirred so stirred I'm just going to close the service in prayer and then uh, we can go well thank you so much for Ham and Jay thank you for the amazing stories of what you're doing through them as a couple in business and in ministry. We love it, Lord. We pray your favor and blessing continue to be on them. Lord, thank you for what you've done in us this morning. Thank you for stirring us and for lifting our eyes. we don't want to just be excited this morning we're asking for deep change within us yeah. we want to believe for this region Lord. we want to believe for this nation we want to believe for the nation So we say, Lord, here we are, we are ready. Use us, Lord. Send us, Lord. Glorify yourself through us, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week, you guys.